Scooter here, man on the inside. Guess what today is? Time for part two of the sharpening videos. Don't look at this. Okay, I had to get that out of the open. <laughs> Let's say, uh, well first of all, we're going to go over the buffing of the knife. So let's pretend you have a knife that you've somehow acquired a burr. This might seem backwards because the next video I'm going to show you how to get the burr, but I wanted to cover this today because I thought maybe your buddy knows how to sharpen and he can do the burr part. Maybe somebody does have a machine and you were able to put the burr on yourself on a machine, but there's no way to buff it in the shop wherever you might have been, let's say, something like that. <clears throat> Here's a brand new knife, no scales obviously, that I put a burr on. Can you see the burr, Michael? You see that faint white line there? Yep. Okay. We're going to go over this a bunch more in the next video, of course, but just very quickly. If you take these three fingers and pluck it like this, you'll have a burr on one side and not the other. Because one side is going to grab your finger, it's not going to get cut. The other side, <clears throat> your finger is going to slide right off. Or you can just look down the edge and see that faint white line. That's the burr. Okay, that's only halfway. You're not going to cut anything with a burr. We need to buff it. Remember we buffed on the machine. It's very fast. It's very efficient. This is not fast. It does work, however. It just takes a little time. I suggest when you start out buffing uh, and getting your burr for that matter, again we'll go over that next video, when you start to buff, <coughs> use the sharpie marker. <coughs> did we use the sharpie marker in the other video? No, Hang on. We're going to take the sharpie. Notice this is a little baby sharpie that fits in your pocket. Got this at the hardware store. I've taken the Sharpie, I've taken the Sharpie and painted the edge on both sides, not just the side with the burr, okay? First off, we will use the strop bat. This is uh, a repaired strop bat from JRE that uh, somebody sent in for a warranty and I fixed it up and I'm going to use it today because it's the only one I got in the shop. But basically, this is obviously, it's on a piece of wood, so the leather, it's hard backed. It's not like using a mouse pad and sandpaper. There's a little bit of give here, but not much. And that's because we want that because the edge on all of the knives are con is convex. Even the Scandies have that micro bevel to them. So this side here is plain leather. <clears throat> then we have the black rouge, some green rouge, and on this one I believe this is white. And then you finish with <coughs> the plain leather. You can run all four sides, you don't have to. I prefer to just use the black rouge, works really well. So here's the trick to it, and this is why it's easier on the strop bat. <clears throat> we want to hold this knife at such an angle that when we take a stroke on the leather, <coughs> we are not holding the edge too much so we make a butter knife, but if too shallow, we're not going to hit the edge. We want it just right. Hence the Sharpie marker. Okay, zoom in down here, son, Michael. <clears throat> you can start at the tip. You can start at the plunge line. Does not matter. I'm going to start at the tip. And I'm using uh, medium pressure. One stroke. Two strokes three strokes. Alright, can you see that I've not taken any of the Sharpie marker off? <laughs> Holding it too shallow. Did that on purpose. You got to do this a little bit till it starts to remove the Sharpie marker and then you know where you're hitting and what angle you can you can hold the knife at. Don't make this mistake. I see a, a lot of guys do this. They will start here and by the time they get to here the knife is like this because they're going whoosh, don't do that. Don't change the angle. Try to hold the same angle the whole time. Just takes a little practice. Oop, oops. Okay, now can you see that? 
it's gone, it's gone, and I missed the tip a little bit. Is that coming up? I'm not, okay. So I hit the tip a little bit more. Trying to hold the same angle, of course. That's looking a little better. But I don't want to just work on one side in this instance because we're in a shop, you could be at home, could be at camp. Uh, another video will be sharpening, like let's call it survival sharpening. And that's similar but different. We'll go over that later. All right, so now I'm gonna work on the other side. Started to take a little bit off there, a little there, still leaving some right there. Notice I changed hands. If that's too difficult, you can do, you know, you can leave it in your right hand. It depends what's more comfortable for you. It, it really doesn't matter as long as you're stropping off the burr. <clears throat> still missed a wee little bit right there, but this is starting to get a little better. I'm going to increase my angle just a wee little bit. Getting better. Getting better. Now, <clears throat> there's a difference here also between uh, shop finish, like what we produce and, and you guys buy on the website, and like a field serviceable edge. You could strop this thing by hand and get it to be razor sharp, no problem. It's going to take a little bit of time. Nothing like the buffer in the last video. Or you could strop it enough to cut arm hair and kind of get a serviceable edge. And we'll go into more of that type of thing uh, on the survival sharpening video. But you've seen I've used, okay, here's one example, strop bat. Now what if you don't have the strop bat? Let's paint this back up a little bit. We got to use something else. Typically, and this is just in broad strokes here, whatever will dull your knife can also potentially sharpen your knife. And mainly when I say that, I don't mean punching it through the hood of your buddy's Chevy. That ain't going to work for sharpening. I mean using cardboard, for example. Cardboard, if you ever cut up a bunch of cardboard boxes, you know that it will dull your knife fairly quickly. <clears throat> because there's not just paper involved here. There's some other stuff to give it some strength. So if you <clears throat> tear off a piece of that cardboard before you start cutting up the boxes, now you can use this very similar to the strop bat. Just taking the marker off there, missed a little there, hit there. This works too. Let's just drop this side. That's starting <clears throat> to work also. I've got to change my angle down on the edge there. This will make a serviceable edge. If you don't have any boxes, look at the back of this notepad. It's fantastic. Same exact idea. Just keep it on something firm so it doesn't bow on you. That's taken off more of my marker. I don't know how good you can see that edge there. <clears throat> more of it is coming off. There's three examples. Guess what else works really good? Cold hard cash. I'm sure you've all put money through the washer and the dryer and it's come out and it's fine. There's just more than just paper involved here, obviously. More abrasive things in here. So, same idea. Try and get this laid out on something firm. And use George's face to sharpen your knife. 
This works actually really well because not only does it have some abrasiveness to it, if you stack up a few of them like this, it, it will give a little bit and conform to that convex edge that you have on your LT right knife. This is really good. Guess what else works good, Michael? Guess what else? Ooh, what? Got a rough side, we got a polished side. Other, uh, short of having the strop bat, <clears throat> this works the best. And it has a little bit of give. This is a, <clears throat> this is a gun belt. It's a little thicker than your average dress belt. Still a little bit right there. Uh, but now we've got, like I said, two, two grits to use. That works fantastic. Okay, now let me actually look at this and make sure I got it good. That's pretty good. Let me hit it a little bit more on this side. Oh, wait, I want to I show you one more thing. Notice whenever we're using the strop bat, or this belt for that matter, <clears throat> we have a pretty long piece of leather or whatever we want to buff. Okay, let's say, now this is, goes more for sharpening and getting the burr, but uh, let's say, because I'm going to show you in the next video, what if you had a rock? Amongst other things I will show you, you can use a rock out of the crick to sharpen your knife. What if it was only that big? Well, that, that's not going to work. But if you do more of this action instead of this action, it will fit. I'll show you how to sharpen <clears throat> on a small rock when we get to it. But if that's all the bigger piece of leather here, like on this ancient blind horse knives, large workhorse, and you just had this thing, it's not real long. That will work. Or, just for this particular thing, take out those Chicago screws and now you've got the rough sides. It's the same, same idea as a belt. Okay. Let's see how let's see how this cuts. This might cut good, this might need more buffing. That's how you test your stuff out. This is another part of it. I think I went over this in the other video. Okay, always try and test the knife with the same thing. We always use <clears throat> Uline catalogs because <laughs> they send them to us. Those work fantastic. Got this note paper is not too bad. Nothing. <laughs> Let's get a little bit more on that. Like I said, this was a brand new knife. It had a burr. Oh, a little bit more on the tip. And we're looking for a serviceable edge. As in, will it process game? <clears throat> will it baton through wood? I'm sure that would have baton through wood right now. No problem. Process game, skinning and cutting. It would probably work, but it would be obviously better if it was very, very strong. Keep going with it a little bit more. Mike, we might need to time lapse on this. Could be slow. <clears throat> now, if I had my buddy Chris Wisdom here, I would just get the burr, pass it to Chris, and he does the buffing part. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh, there we go. It's coming around. It's coming. Seems to cut pretty good in the middle. Need to work more on the edge here and a little bit up here, but if I spent enough time stropping this thing, you'd see I could get it nice to where I want it. And this particular knife, you see it's even marked. This is 57 Rockwell, and this has been tested. 
<clears throat> so good enough to sharpen in the field with any, any of this stuff. Like I said, it just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. If you're not used to doing it, keep using the Sharpie marker so you know that you're hitting the whole blade from tip to plunge, point, uh, plunge line. Just make sure you get the whole thing. In the next video, like I said, we'll teach you how to put the burr on there when it's completely dull in a variety of ways. Since we've already done it in the shop, we're going to do it using non-conventional items. And then come back, buff it however you know, strop it however you want. And in another video, some survival sharpening, which is, like I said, similar but different because we might need to have a sharp knife quickly. You never know. We'll go over that some more. And uh, if somebody has any questions on the video or wants me to go over different aspects of sharpening, you know, reply down below the video and we'll try to reply to that. Uh, we'll have some more stuff in the next video, more props, and like I said, get the burr. The burr, getting the burr is good because I'm going to show you some wacky ways to do it. Okay, that's it for today. Scooter Man on the inside. Thank you for joining me for the sharpening video and get to strapping. Someone to tell her. Mike, do we have time for an auxiliary video in this video? You can edit it out if you so desire. We have time for everything. Sweet. I say we do. Ready. Cut. Edit. Dun, 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 dun. Scooter's main rules. Are you ready? Michael, there it is. This is stuff that is in the right front pocket. Always have that. This is stuff that's in the left front pocket. This is in the right rear pocket. Left rear pockets for our extra shit. <clears throat> this money, see this money? Not the coins, not the coins. Those are dumb. We're gonna use this. Set all that over there.